Hello there, my name is Miss Red Nebula and welcome back to Planet Zoo. And just a reminder that this is stuff that I recorded while the beta was still going on. I don't actually have access to the game right now, so don't worry about that. This was actually the last thing that I had a chance to do before the beta ended. I really, really wanted to do a rhinoceros exhibit and didn't think I was going to have time and ended up just having a little bit of time and just enough conservation credits right at the very end, now you know why I made the ostrich farm, so that I could afford to get a rhinoceros. I was really, really happy about that because I thought that there was just no way at all. So this was me experimenting with the idea of using a, a sort of a moat as a way to keep the animal in their enclosure. So you'll see that this is one of the first times that I really did some experimenting with the null fences. I thought this one was going to be pretty fun. Most of the exhibit ends up being him being held inside via use of terrain features only. So I did terrain up and around uh, back in here, and then when I get a little bit later on, then I cover up a lot of that with rock. Again, just a more natural style of exhibit, but I really wanted to try doing the thing where we use the water to keep the animal from getting to where the people are and have uh, that little bit of an overview. What I would have done if I had a little bit more time is I would have liked to have done a sort of canopy over top of where the people are watching. I realized that since there's a kind of an issue where the where the signs for the animals doesn't function properly if it's within the exhibit, even if you've got like a flyover, like where I've got you know, the people can go over top of it. Huh. I used a wind turbine, I actually researched that and was like, oh, I gotta try this thing out. So the, the sign wasn't working up there beforehand, so I ended up changing the null fence so it went down through the water instead of down underneath where the bridge is where the people can go up on top of. That was kind of fun. Oh, Rhino! Yay! <laughs> uh, for for people that watch the Diz channel, uh, I want to name him Clavin. Never had a chance to, but I'll, I'll name I'll name a uh, rhinoceros Clavin when I get to the to the actual game. I think if you follow the Diz, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, no worries. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk briefly about things like what exactly that I'm planning to do with the game and all of that. I mean, I've, I've touched on it a little bit in some of the other videos where I might or I might just jump in and try to do franchise mode, do my little ostrich farm to start off with that starts growing into something a little bit bigger than that. So I thought that that'd be just a really fun idea. I think I want to try and I don't know, it's gonna, it sounds like it could, it could end up sounding corny or it could end up being a lot of fun, but I wanted to do something where I was kind of telling a story as I was going and have like every time that I hired a new member of staff or things like that to do little little story portions for those people and for the different animals that we had coming into the park. I don't know whether the speed of the game is going to cause problems with that. As it is, it's a little bit hard to get attached to animals because they're kind of there and then and then they're gone again, but I really hope that they did take into account that a lot of people were unhappy with the speed and would like it to be a little bit slower, a little bit more like, give us a chance to get to know these guys before they pop their clogs. That'd be nice. <laughs> and especially if we're naming them and, and just really kind of getting to know their personality such as it is. I know, obviously, in the end, these are just digital recreations and nothing more than that, but come on. We're gamers. We like to imagine things, right? So I do plan to do additional tips videos like the first one that I did, and I will be working on some actual tutorials. I was even planning to do at least one or two more tips videos while the beta was out, but gosh, I just didn't end up having a lot of time. It's going to be so nice when we don't have that time limit kind of hovering over our heads anymore. Let's see, just doing... A lot of, lot of rock work for the guy here. I got a lot more confident with the amount of rock work I could do and still have the animal be able to move around the exhibit really nicely. What else? Oh, yeah. Well, the other thing being that <laughs> my 
in my my real world job such as it is i actually my husband and i own our own business where we make masks and it's halloween so guess what i've been busy with for the last month or so which turned out to be right in the middle of trying to get all of this stuff for the beta and and be able to do this at the same time it's been a really busy month guys i'm actually gonna take a week off from doing the mask-related stuff at the end of the month, but it's not going to be a week off from doing videos and all of that, because I really do like to catch up, and I've been having fun, like, I know my channel says that I'm doing them at least one per week, but as you might have noticed, I've been trying to do a little bit more than that. This will be all different types of things, including the various let's plays and especially of indie games but I, I wanted to try out a couple of different styles with that i'm still trying to kind of find my feet and find what i want to do with all of this and of course i haven't been making games for a little while for largely the same reason definitely want to not lose track of that because that was an absolute blast and i want to do more i am just there's so many ideas oh my gosh I can't even begin to tell you, and I genuinely can't because, well, I don't want to, like, say anything and then end up working on a different project and have it be really confusing. That's no fun at all. And I'm getting relatively close to the end of this one. I like the idea of having a plant up on top of the enclosure back in the back like that, and this guy didn't really like to have a lot of plant coverage, which kind of makes sense, but I did want to have some, some plants as especially bushes and stuff like that around the enclosure. Pretty happy with how this one turned out. Again, like the wolves, I kept the enclosure pretty wide and not that deep so that wherever the rhino went, you could kind of keep track of it if you were watching from the people's point of view. For my very last exhibit that I had a chance to do during the beta... Oh yeah, okay, so here we are into some beauty shots of the rhino hanging around. For the last thing that I had a chance to do in the beta, I'm really happy with how this one turned out and had a lot of fun with all of this. So the last thing that I'm going to end up doing will be a kind of a retrospective of the entirety of my beta park. Such as it was, it wasn't the most fantastic thing in the history of anything ever, but I liked it and I was proud of it and had a good time. Anyway, that's it for this one. Feel free to like or comment, and if you want random updates from my little world of art and gaming, subscribe. If you enjoy what I do and are interested in supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. A big thank you to my current patrons. That's all for now. Bye!